Good evening, or good morning, good noon, or good midnight, whenever and wherever you're watching this. Welcome to a sort of kind of afterthoughts video. Whenever I finish a book on this channel, I sit down and talk a bit about the book, about the reading, what went through my mind in, in some cases. These videos are more like reviews. In other cases, I, I provide a bit of background information on the book, on the authors. In this case, it's, yeah, I will talk a bit about Jules Verne and his legacy, but I will also share a personal anecdote why this book in particular is so very, very important to me and, and so very dear to my heart. 20,000 Leagues Under the Seas introduced me to Jules Verne's works when I was in my, my early teenage years. I, I literally devoured this novel. And when I realized that I hadn't read it for at least 30 years or so, I was really excited to dive in once again. And I hope that you were just as me, not disappointed by this amazing novel. Jules Verne was a French playwright, poet and best-selling novelist. He was born in 1828 in Nantes. There'd be a lot to say about Jules Verne, his work his almost prophetic visions regarding technology and, of course, also his legacy. And that is what I want to focus on this video. Without a shadow of a doubt, Jules Verne was one of the most influential science fiction writers of all time. I mean, alongside H.G. Wells, he is often called the father of science fiction and therefore one of the creators of this genre. But not only that, Verne is not only widely considered as one of the most popular and influential science fiction authors of all time, but as one of the most popular and influential authors of all time. He is the single most translated French author and the second most translated author in general. And if you wonder who the first most often translated author is, well, I would have guessed that it was William Shakespeare. It isn't, though. Shakespeare is only number three. The most translated author of all time is Agatha Christie. Jules Verne was a very prolific writer. He wrote or collaborated on at least 12 stage plays, some of which were adaptations of his own novels, of which he wrote more than 60. Some of his most famous ones are Journey to the Center of the Earth, From the Earth to the Moon, Around the World in 80 Days, and... 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, all of which you can find on this channel read by yours truly. To me, Jules Verne is something like the Leonardo da Vinci of storytelling. Just like da Vinci, Jules Verne envisioned technological marvels. Sure, da Vinci basically constructed them on paper or even in the form of smaller models, Verne brought them to life in his stories. Many, if not all, of Verne's fantastic ideas later became reality and are now part of this, our, reality. Submarines, helicopters, rockets, satellites, video conferencing and solar sails. And I'm sure that I forgot some. 
Jules Verne not only captivated his audience, he also inspired other authors, such as Arthur Rimbaud, Raymond Roussel, Jean Cocteau, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, Arthur C. Clarke, Ray Bradbury, Jean-Paul Sartre, and countless others. His ingenuity also influenced science and scientists, among many others, Simon Lake, a pioneer in submarine design, named 20,000 Leagues Under the Seas as a major inspiration and even called Jules Verne the director general of his life. Then there's marine biologist William Bieber, and I hope I, I pronounce his name correctly. There's Antarctic explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton and professor of oceanography Robert Ballard. They also credited the novel as a major inspiration, and oceanographer and filmmaker Jacques Cousteau called 20,000 Leagues Under the Seas his shipboard Bible. And that is all not only because of Jules Verne's overboarding imagination, but to a large degree also because of his scientific accuracy. Verne was a thorough researcher and meticulously wove the scientific knowledge of his time into his stories. During his lifetime, Verne was held in high regard in France and most of Europe. He was an acclaimed writer and seen as a visionary and received several honors and awards such as the Legion of Honor in 1892. In the English-speaking world, though, he was often labeled an author of children's books, and this was mostly due to bad translations that were heavily abridged and massively altered, and so were lacking the depth and the wit the originals have. After his death in 1905, this slowly changed, though. His books were retranslated and re-evaluated and posthumously Jules Verne finally received the recognition he deserves in the rest of the world. His novels were adapted for film since the beginning of cinema. Think of Georges Méliès' Le Voyage dans la Lune, for example, but also for comic books, theater, opera, music, and video games. Jules Verne also was a big influence in the development of the steampunk subgenre of fantasy and science fiction, which features retro-futuristic machines and settings. And as a video game nerd, of course, I have to first think of the Final Fantasy, Bioshock, and Dishonored series, of course. And Dishonored is still one of my favorite games ever. When we talk of movies, Metropolis from 1927 comes to mind. It has some, some steampunk vibes to it. Then there's the animated castle in the sky. The City of Lost Children, Rocketeer, Van Helsing, Hugo by Martin Scorsese, of course. Then there's Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, in case you know that movie. I, I really like it. It's a quirky and weird, low-budget, fun movie. And the making of it is probably even more interesting and, and funny than the movie itself. Then we have, of course, Sleepy Hollow by Tim Burton, which also has some steampunk references. And then there's The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, based on the comic book of the same name. In my opinion, the movie is not really that good, but at least it's not as as bad as the infamous and infamously horrible, in my personal opinion, Wild Wild West with Will Smith. Let's not talk about Wild Wild West. That movie feels like a slap in the face by Will Smith, and I don't know where that reference came from. The probably most well-known steampunk movie, and thus the circle closes, is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the Disney version. And there are a couple of, of film adaptations of that novel, of course, but I personally 
really like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Disney, even though it it moves away from the novel quite drastically in many aspects. This movie changed it all for me, though. When I first watched it, I was blown away. Sure, like all Disney adaptations of novels, it is not very close to the original, but it is still an amazing movie till this very day. And all I wanted as a kid was to step foot into the Nautilus. And my dream came true in 1998, during our last family vacation. And this vacation is still one of the fondest memories of my life. We went to Euro Disney. My mom, my dad, my brother, one of my sisters, and a close friend of our family with his mom. My mom had just uh, recovered from her cancer surgery. She went through chemotherapy, and because of the chemo, she had lost all her hair and was wearing a wig. And she really disliked all kinds of rides on fun fairs. Somehow, though, she decided that she wanted to go on the Big Thunder Mountain ride with us. But she was terribly afraid of losing her wig. My friend's mom gave her a scarf with which she tied the wig to her head. And honest to God, I've never seen my mom that happy and exuberant ever before. She laughed out loud, and I've never heard her laughing so heartily before or again. And we were joking all of the time, and I got her this, this Mickey Mouse hat so that she doesn't need a scarf anymore, so that she doesn't have to be afraid of of losing her wig. We had such a wonderful time. We visited Phantom Manor. We did the Pirates of the Caribbean ride about eight times in a row. And I was able to step into the Nautilus. My childhood dream had come true. And so, of course, whenever I hear the name Jules Verne or whenever I read one of his novels and specifically, of course, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, I have to automatically think of our last family vacation and and the, the beautiful and wonderful time we had there. About four years after that vacation, my mom's cancer came back and well, this time she she didn't make it. Now, more than 20 years after her passing, with all the grief and the pain that is still there, of course it is still there, I nevertheless immediately have to think about this wonderful time we had on our last family vacation. And to me, this is really, really comforting. There is more than the pain. There's more than the grief. Of course, yeah, it's still there, even after 20 years. But there's always that image of my mom laughing so heartily and her being so full of joy and and so full of excitement. And that is what I'm really, really grateful for. And this memory will always be connected in my mind to the Nautilus, in Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Seas. All right, that's, that's for this video, and, and that's for this book. There will be some more Jules Verne books on this channel. The next one will not be a Jules Verne book, though. It will not be a science fiction book. It will be something entirely different. In the next book, we will once again meet... Count Dracula. It's a short story, basically, but one that I had been wanting to read for a very long time. It is Bram Stoker's Dracula's Guest. And if you want to, you can join me starting next week. This one's for today. Bye-bye. Till next time.